वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम जीवन कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक पॉलिसी लॉ एंड गवर्नेंस सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इन ए पेपर पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड इंट्रोडक्शन द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आर द फॉलोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द एवोल्यूशन of public administration as a discipline to examine the challenges to the identity of the discipline public administration and discuss the present status of the discipline public administration the module is divided into the following sections and the the first part describes the evolution of public administration as an activity and also as an academic discipline and the second part discusses the various stages of evolution through which the discipline has reached this present status in the third part we will discuss the phases and the issues arising out of the ongoing evolution of the discipline public administration and we will also try to see how it has come to at this stage and the future direction to the discipline also and in this entire module we will try to understand how public administration has reached this status as a discipline in the social sciences now let us look at the evolution of public administration what does the mean the term evolution means evolution means the gradual development of a thing or a phenomena in course of time and what is public administration in general the public administration in general means serving the people through the government agencies or we can say that the public administration deals with the delivery of the services to the people through the government agencies how do you see public administration we can see public administration as an activity and also as a discipline what do you mean by an activity an activity is the one that we do in our day to day life let us see how public administration can be viewed from the perspective of an activity if you look at the human history the presence of public administration is ubiquitous because it pervades into all spheres of our life for instance look at the civilizations of egypt china india we all we will find the traces of public administration in those ancient civilizations of those countries for instance the chinese civilization had adopted the strict and highly centralized recruitment pattern in those days and in the ancient greek city states and the kingdom of republic of india also adopted strict means of administration in different ways so all these civilizations will give us a an identity to the, the discipline of public administration as an activity and over a period of time from ancient times to the medieval times we will also see how public administration as an activity evolved for instance in france england and russia the policies that are related to war has necessitated the public administration and a large number of the ministries and departments were created in those countries and which will give us the evidence that the public administration as an activity existed 
in those times. And slowly, the growth of the democracy has expanded the scope and nature of public administration in those systems. Further, the industrial revolution in the West has expanded the relevance of public administration in those times because the organization and methods that were existing in those countries were very complex. The interference of public administration in those societies were inevitable. So we see that the public administration over a period of time evolved as an activity. And we can see clearly here that the prior to the World War I, the public administration as a discipline was very national. However, the economic depressions in 1930s and the resultant consequences have led to the discipline to grow further and further. That is how now we see the discipline of public administration is no more a national because it cuts across the other countries. So we see that the evolution of public administration from national to the international. Now, let us look at the rise of the study of public administration. As I have discussed earlier, that the public administration is not only an activity, but is also a discipline. And as a discipline, the study of public administration is of very recent origin. We can trace it to the closing years of the 19th century. Then a question arises. If the public administration is so pervasive in our day-to-day -day life in the since human existence, why it could not be recognized as a discipline as its own? How can it remain as an important activity without recognition as a discipline for a long time? If you look into the history and the evolution of the discipline, it shows that ancient text in those days had a sound theoretical background. And they have their theoretical backgrounds in the disciplines like politics, ethics and law. Let us look at some of the historical books with regard to this. What are they? Ramayana, Mahabharata, Adhashastra in Indian context, they provide as the traces of the sound principles of administration on which a country can be governed. Not only in India, even outside India also we can see in the writings. For instance, Politics by Aristotle and The Prince by Machiavelli will show that a strong administration is required to run a country. However, there has not been a recognition for the discipline of public administration for so long. It is only in 1812 that a book which was published by Charles Jane Bonin titled Principles of Administration Public, which can be considered as the beginning of the public administration as a discipline. It was, in fact, as I have discussed earlier, that the Industrial Revolution opened the new vistas of public administration, ultimately leading to the study of the theoretical aspects of the discipline of public administration. Even the term public administration was used for the first time by Hamilton in the closing years of 18th century. The discipline could not get the status 
as it enjoys today is because of its inability to deal with the complexities that were arising out of that. It was only after the industrial revolution when the strong civil service was required to intervene to resolve the complex issues then only the need for the study of the discipline of public administration arose. And the technicalities that were emerging out of those crises were the strong reasons for the identity of the discipline public administration. Now we discuss the evolution of the discipline of public administration. And in this, we will see the different views of public administration scholars on the stages of the evolution of public administration as such. It is important to note that for the first time, the study has got its identity due to the contribution of Woodrow Wilson, the former president of United States of America, and uh, his article on the study of administration in 1887 can be seen as an important contribution to the evolution of public administration. Therefore, the study of public administration and its evolution is essential. However, there are divergent views on the phases of development of this discipline. For instance, some viewed it from the perspective of absolute, others viewed it from liberal and democratic perspective, some others view it from the Marxian perspective and there was no consensus on the different phases of these evolution. For instance, Golombevsky has discussed the evolution of public administration in terms of locus and focus. I will explain what it is. To him, locus is the institutional where aspect of the field, whereas focus deals with what of the field of the discipline. He outlined four phases in the development of the discipline. What are they? The phase one is the phase of the analytic distinction of politics from administration. And the second phase is the concrete distinction of politics from administration. Third phase is a science of management. And the fourth stage is the pervasive orientation towards public policy. And there is another scholar who also proposed his ideas on the evolution of the discipline public administration. And he provided with five paradigms in the evolution of the discipline. The first paradigm is the politics administration dichotomy. It is, its period is from 1922-1926. And the second paradigm is about the principles of public administration, 1927-37. The third paradigm is the public administration as a political science that is in between 1915 to 1917. And the fourth paradigm is the paradigm of public administration as a management that was dominant between 1956 to 1970. And the last paradigm was public administration as a public administration as a discipline on its own, starting from 1970 and it continues now. 
And we can also see in this classification that there is some ambiguity and due to overlapping of the phases. In a more logical sense, the evolution of public administration as an academic field can be discussed in the following five phases. What are they? Phase one, the politics administration dichotomy. The period is 1887 to 1926. Phase two, the principles of administration, 1927 to 37. Phase three, criticism and challenges, 1938 to 1950. Phase four, crisis of identity, 1950 to 1970. And phase five, public administration as an independent discipline from 1917 onwards. As we discussed earlier, the evolution of public administration can be divided into five phases. Now let us look at the first phase. The first phase is about politics administration dichotomy. The duration is 1887 to 1926. Woodrow Wilson, who is called the father of the public administration, was the first person to set the tone for the early study of public administration in his writing. The title, The Study of Public Administration, The Study of Administration, published in 1887. What was the focus of his writing? The focus of his writing was that the politics should be differentiated from administration. For him, both are two distinct areas of study. And he emphasized that the study of public administration is scientific. Therefore, it requires a special treatment in the school social sciences. And he said, that it is easy to frame the constitution to then running the constitution. What he means to say in this is that to run the state, to run a government is more difficult than formulating the policy itself. It implies that the need for administration and its study is very important that is what he means to say in that and he said that both are too distinct and administration should be seen as a business therefore he started giving an identity to the study of public administration That is how we see that the scientific study of public administration began. However, the idea of dichotomy between politics and administration has been criticized by others. Forerunner among them is Richard Stillman who said that Woodrow Wilson is not clear about the distinction between politics and public administration. Stillman says that the activity of public administration is political in nature. Therefore, he says that the politics cannot be separated from public administration. And there is another person who supported the dichotomy. He is Goodnow, who in his book entitled The Politics and Administration in 1900, he said that politics is separate and administration is separate. He argued that politics has to do with the policies or expression of the state will, while the administration has to do with the execution of those policies. 
Therefore, we see the clear distinction between politics and administration. And he supported the dichotomy view of Woodrow Wilson. And also, during that time, there was a development that took place in America. What was that? America introduced several reforms with regard to civil services in the early 20th century. And in many universities of America, the study of public administration was introduced by establishing departments of public administration. And we also see in the writings of other scholars, for example, L.D. White, who supported that the study of public administration should be separated from the study of politics. He strengthened the notion of the dichotomy of politics and administration. And what was his argument? The argument of his book was that politics should not be interfered in the public administration. And he said that the public administration is a capable of becoming a value-free science in its own sense. And the mission of public administration is economy and efficiency. Therefore, he said that the politics and administration distinction is possible. He goes on to say that the executive aspect of public administration is scientific and also factual, while the study of policy making is related more with the politics aspect. Thus, he says that the study of public administration is it's very scientific. Therefore, it deserves the treatment of a separate disciplines. And in the writings of Woodrow Wilson, Frank Goodno, L.D. White, we see that the major discussion was on the evolution of public administration with regard to the first phase politics and administration. Despite the criticism against this dichotomy, this period witnessed the discovery of certain principles of administration which paved the way for the second phase which deals with the principles of administration. In the first phase, we saw about the distinction between politics and administration. In the second phase, we will see how public administration has been discussed in terms of the principles. And this phase is called the principles of administration phase. The period is 1927 to 1937. In this phase, we see the important works written by Luther Gallig and also Frederick Taylor. And their contribution to this phase is enormous. And scholars have made enormous efforts to discover certain scientific principles of administration. To begin with, in 1927, Willaboy published a book titled Principles of Public Administration in which he argued that in administration there are certain principles of general application analogous to those characterizing any science. He projected the idea that these principles are no lesser than any principles of which are scientific in nature. And we can also see in others' writings where different 
principles have been proposed. For example, in Follett's Creative Experience, in 1924, Henry Fales Industrial and General Management, in 1939, James D. Mooney and Alan C. Rayleigh's Principles of Organization, in 1939, we find that there was an attempt to project the public administration in terms of different principles where they asserted that the study of public administration is no lesser than the study of any scientific disciplines as such. However, the writings of Luther Gallic and Lindahl Urwicks made an important contribution to this phase. And this phase is called the golden period for the public administration because of their contribution. What was their writing? The writing was the papers on the science of administration and it was published in 1937. They argued that there are certain principles in administration which can be inductively arrived at from the study of human organizations. And these principles govern human associations and they also govern the organizations which are run by the individuals. Therefore, they say that the study of public administration is scientific per se. They came up with an important acronym called POSTGOR. P stands for planning, O stands for organizing, S stands for staffing, D stands for directing, C stands for coordinating, R stands for reporting, and B stands for budgeting. And in this postcard, they have limited themselves to the administration at a higher level. That was an important criticism raised against them. In this phase, we also have to look at the contribution made by Frederick Tellers, where he published a book titled Principles of Scientific Management in 19. 11. The focus of this book is on the administration at lower level. The focus is more on how to increase efficiency by following different scientific principles. How to extract the work from the workers in an efficient manner. This argument was also not free from the criticism. For instance, Mohit Bhattacharya, he pointed out that the public aspect of public administration is missing in this phase because the Frederick Taylor's scientific principles merely focused on the efficiency aspect by neglecting the public aspect. The lack of, fo lack of locus has created confusion in the study of public administration in this, this, in this phase. However, we see certain attempts were made in America to start a association that is called American Society for Public Administration and which became the nation's primary association of scholars and professionals in public administration. Later, they also sponsored a premier journal that is called Public Administration Review. And to sum up this phase, we see that the second phase of public administration is marked by the conscious efforts to make public administration a profession and a discipline.
earlier we have seen two phases of the evolution of the discipline of public administration. In the third phase, we see the criticism and challenges that were posed to the study of public administration. The phase was between 1937 to 1950s. In this phase, we will look at some of the contributions made by Chester Bernard, Herbert Simon, Robert Dahl. The functions of the executive, the book written by the Chester Bernard, challenged the claims of politics administration dichotomy and the claims for the scientific nature of the discipline of public administration. And in the book written by Marx in the elements of public administration, he says that politics is not different from the administration. He critically examines that public administration is not only related with the implementation aspects of the policy decisions, but it is also related with the processes involved in arriving at the policy decisions. And now we see the writings of Herbert Simon. The title of the book is Administrative Behavior. In that book, he says that the scientific principles of administrations are mere proverbs. They are no more scientific in that sense. He says that every principle will have a counter principles. He advocated behavioralism as a, an approach to make the discipline very scientific. Robert Dahl joined Herbert Simons in this criticism. In his article, The Science of Administration, Three Problems, he observed that the study of public administration is far from science because it could not clear normative values. And it also could not predict human behavior. Robert Dahl also says, that it is not possible to have scientific principles unless we adopt a comparative methods. To Robert Dahl, public administration failed to meet all these criteria. Therefore, the principles of public administration are not scientific. Dwight Waldo also in his book, The Administrative Science in 1948, attacked the notion of the principles of administrations. And he said that there are inconsistencies in the principles of management. With all this criticism and challenges posed in the third phase, there was a compulsion to abandon the dichotomy between politics and administration and to make it as an attempt as a scientific discipline. Okay? The fourth phase of public administration is a phase of crisis of identity in 1948 to 1970. This phase was a more turbulent phase for the discipline of public administration. As we have seen earlier, that Robert Dahl and Herbert Simon and their criticism of scientific nature of discipline. And it led to the scholars to find the ways in which public administration can be given a recognition as a separate discipline. In the process, attempt was made to link public administration with the discipline of political science and the management. And there were scholars who were also trying to see that politics is nothing but administration and vice versa. 
they were trying to portray that the study of public administration is also the study of politics and the politics of administration the study of politics is also the politics of public administration and the most important scholar in this area is john gauss who published his article in 1950 he says trends in the theory of public administration is that a theory of public administration means a theory of politics also that is how the umbilical cord between politics and the study of public administration has been established in the writings and during this phase we have to observe two important developments what were they the first development is the growing importance for the case study method and that was also adopted in public administration and the second development is the rise and fall of comparative approach to the public administration let us look at these developments robert dol we have seen in the last and the previous stage that to make the study of public administration scientific we need to adapt comparative method and there was also an emphasis that cultural factors must be studied to make the discipline very scientific in this process we have the development of comparative administration group in 1930 and which was funded by the ford foundation the emphasis of this support was to study different administrative systems from a comparative perspectives and undertaking understanding the cultural factors that influence administrative settings and frederick's approach and his approach is ecological approach to study the administrative systems made any important effect on the study of public administration however this has got a setback because the major focus was studying public administration from theoretical aspect which subsequently led to the questioning of its identity and it led to the a problem of identity for the discipline as a result in 1973 the comparative public administration that group was abandoned so this is how the discipline of public administration was undergoing a crisis in that period and i also explained earlier that the this phase marked the relinking of public administration with the political science and also management in the writings of several authors we find that the public administration and management principles were put together the study of management and the study of public administration was almost treated the same for instance the writings of herbert simon richard syatt march all these their writings reflect that public administration was tried to be relinked with the principles of management and this was a paradigm shift however the relinking of public administration with the management had a criticism because it has a focus but it doesn't have a locus in terms of focus it provided certain management principles to public administration in terms of how to achieve efficiency 
but it didn't clearly mention in which settings these principles can be applied therefore in this phase of crisis the public administration was not in a position to identify itself with the management or with the political science that's why this phase is a phase of crisis of identity for the discipline of public administration now we have come to the discussion on the last phase of public administration that is public administration as an independent discipline that starts from 1970s we will discuss some of the developments that took place from 1970 and worlds we have seen in the previous day that the image and the study of public administration is at its low ebb and simultaneously we also see some of the seeds of hope in terms of the study of public administration where renaissance took place a number of factors contributed to this hope for instance the study of public administration became interdisciplinary in nature and one side we have public administration which can be studied from the different perspectives from economic perspective policy perspective and organization perspective this made the study of public administration interesting and it was felt that public administration was necessary and that was an important development that took place in that time and during that time also we see that the policy sciences were emerging as a separate discipline h k l drawer's contribution to this was enormous policy was seen as a science and therefore public policy has become the sub discipline of the study of public administration and there is also another important development that took place in 1970s that is minobrook conference under the leadership of dwight wald and this minobrook conference we see that public administration and its relevance was questioned and the concern with the social equity the concern for a change these three have been discussed at the minobrook conference the relevance part of public administration social concerns equity concerns all these may the study of public administration again an important area to be studied and it was emphasized that public administration should not be just be descriptive it should be more prescriptive at the same time it can also be very scientific the overall focus of the new public administration that i have discussed now is to make administration less generic and more public less descriptive and more prescriptive less institution oriented and more client oriented less neutral and more normative at the same time it also should be very scientific in america in 1970 National Association for National Association of Schools of Public Affairs and Administration was established it comprised of several institutions of higher learning and different countries have joined in this so this development indicate the development of public administration as an independent discipline from the theoretical perspective the normative questions were being reassessed 
under the influence of new public administration. As I discussed, relevance, equity and social change were the important themes that were discussed at the new at the Minobrook conference. And moreover, the advent of neoliberalism philosophy and minimal state policy sciences advocated by H. K. L. Trott, all these developments made the study of public administration relevant. The neoliberal philosophy which questions the maximum presence of the state and administrative apparatus has given the enormous scope on research in public administration, the role of state and its administrative apparatus in public service delivery have become an important area for policy research. And in 1980s, we also see another development that is new public management influenced by the management principles. Ted Gabler and David Osborne in their writing, Reinventing Government, they discussed that the government should be run on business lines. The focus should be on the customers. And they questioned the manner in which the public organizations were working. They saw it as a movement. They wanted a overhauling of the public organizations. And they advocated for introduction of business principles in the running of public organizations to make them relevant to the contemporary needs of the society. Subsequently, in 1990s, Den Haag and Den Haag also proposed the concept of new public service by focusing on the responsibilities of the government. They question the ethics of public service. They argued for the dedication of the public servants to the cause of the people. So these developments in a way have paved for the revival in the interest of the study of the discipline public administration. And the public choice approach advocated by Vincent Osborne clearly advocated for the state minimalism. And there was a new ways of understanding the state's bureaucracy and how it functions. Thus, the study of public administration in terms of studying its focus on neoliberalism and the welfare state and its reach to the people have generated interest in the public administration scholars. And we can see that the distinction between the management and the administration is being blurred, where we see that the government is an important element of the state, while administration is the concrete form of government. We began our lecture by understanding that the discipline of public administration can be traced to the early 19th century. However, the discipline as an activity is as old as a human civilization that we saw in Egypt, Chinese and ancient India. And as a study of discipline, we saw that public administration evolved over a period of time from 1887 with a focus on politics, administration, dichotomy, and the principles of public administration in 1927 were 
it underwent a crisis due to criticisms from 1937 to 1970s and we also saw we we see that the 1970s witnessed a revival in the interest in the study of the discipline of public administration in terms of its relevance equity and social concerns and from then onwards we see that the public administration emerged itself as a discipline in terms of its approach to the public service delivery in the wake of globalization i hope you understood this lesson for further details you can refer to the e content and also look at the web resources thank you